That is a cool looking truck. <laughs> Holy shit, I love it. Probably my favorite truck right now. I'm sorry. 55 can hear me right now, so my apologies, but the thing is cool as shit. Easy. Oh, it's working perfect. Well, you didn't nail the other side. Well, how do you know? Check it out. We got so much finished on this. I'm very happy. We're back on the 1969 Blazer build. In this video, we do custom hood hinges. We also get started making our floor from scratch. Let's get to the footage. Before we get started here today, what the hell is that? I'm sorry, guys. I, somebody must have pulled this thing in the shop. I'm not a Honda guy at all. Okay, never mind. I'm interested. That's awesome. We are doing a live drawing for the giveaway on the 79 Monte Carlo. We're going to pick a winner tonight, 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'm going to try and go live here on YouTube and on Facebook. So keep an eye on both of those if you want to watch us do a drawing and see who's going to be the new owner of the 79 Monte Carlo. Now, let's get to work on the Blazer. We're back on the 69 Blazer. I'm really excited to get back on this thing. I've been waiting for parts for entirely too long. Got my drive shaft back. Look at this little cutie pie. That is a 14 inch drive shaft <laughs> and it goes into my carrier bearing. And then this is the, you know, normal. If you aren't familiar with this build, this was a long bed truck that I have shortened and turned into a blazer. And a blazer is even shorter than a short bed truck. So we cut the living hell out of it and we're just doing all kinds of fun hot rod shit. Also, very excited. I've been waiting on these for, I think, almost a month. These are my hood hinges. These are badass custom hood hinges that move your standard hood hinges go down here. And whenever you have a bag C10 that's literally laying rocker, it's just impossible to get a hood hinge there because your wheel is all the way up in here now. What these do, these are a custom hood hinge that goes in the front of your firewall or at the very top of your firewall, not the front of it, the very top of it up here. And I think all of this is inside the firewall so you don't see any of it. And then this just sticks out. It's a really clean setup. I'm very excited to finally get it. These are like $600 and uh, I'm trying to do like a super budget build. So 600 was kind of going to kill the budget. Sure enough, I ended up finding a set on an auction. You know, sometimes they will have a buy it now. Sometimes they will actually have an auction listing. I ended up getting these for three, I think 330, which is still pretty damn expensive for hood hinges, but these are exactly what I needed. I was going to maybe try and do a weird flip front end, but this they're just not great with these years. This is just the best way to go. So I'm very excited. I think the first thing I want to do Let's see if I can't get this damn drive shaft in. I know that I've measured everything right. I am just worried about how much it's gonna move. What is that, articulation? That's not right. Something, one of those words. Uh, I'm worried about how much it's gonna move because my bags move this rear end up and down almost a full foot. So let's dive in and see what we can come into. Hopefully I don't have to cut all this up and make a bunch of custom stuff. Hopefully I can just bolt it in the way it should go, but I don't know, let's find out. Okay, I got it in there. It is actually bolted in. I am worried about the rear end cycling going up and down. It's pretty tight right now. The good news is about a carrier bearing. Carrier bearing has a little bit of play in it, but I don't know if it has enough. I just now got the air charged up. Let's see what It gets a lot better up, which is good because you don't drive it obviously when it's all the way down. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, cool. Awesome. Sometimes when you do these airbag setups, especially when there's a carrier bearing involved, you have to do a spline uh, drive shaft so it can move up and down. I did a 72 Suburban that we airbagged. We had to do that because it just started chewing up carrier bearings. But I think the way I've cut this one down, I think we're okay. But you won't really know until you start driving it. And uh, I'm a little bit from driving it. We, we got a while to go for them. Let's start messing with these hood hinges. Oh, I'm so happy. I was not sure that that was gonna work because uh, I didn't think I had enough clearance in the front. <laughs> this hood is very heavy. The good news is I'm fucking ripped. 
This is actually not fat, it's complete muscle. It's just instead of like an eight pack, it's like a one solid pack. Very strong. Oh, I, I lost all of my, I lost all my confidence instantly. Oh, gotta stay Look at the freaking spider web. Oh, it goes to show you the LC 10's been outside for about a month. <laughs> Damn. Kind of nervous that I had my back in there. Oh, there we go. We're okay. Oh, I forgot we did that on the uh, firewall. I love that. That looks great. These did not come with instructions. So uh, I'm going to try and watch some videos and see if somebody else has installed them. I am pretty sure they go somewhere right here. The only bad news is that side was rusted out completely. So whatever, I don't know, markings I had to go off of are not there because we had to cut that whole piece out. But I don't know, let's figure it out. Okay, check this out. It took me a little bit to wrap my head around. I didn't quite understand how it was supposed to go in there. I got it now. It actually fits in this little pocket of the dash. Basically what it's closed off for your windshield wipers and I think your blower motor might normally be there. I don't know. Check it out. It's really tight. They made this really, really nice. It took me a minute to wrap my head around because I was like, wait, what? Why is this, <laughs> Why is this doing this? This slides in. You have to assemble the hinge in the dash. <laughs> That's what threw me off. I was looking at it going, wait, how does this, I don't understand. This is the only way to do it. You have to put it together after it's in the dash, which is tricky enough on its own. And then figuring out where you need to drill holes and stuff makes it really tricky. Come um, on, baby, catch. I forgot I had another plate that goes out here, too. Oh, there we go. Then this goes back in here like this. Wait, what? Oh, I'm going to trim that. There's no way I'm taking all that apart. But check this out. It not only bolts here it bolts in there from the bottom. So it actually ties it in inner tray. So it's not just, I was worried about having all the weight on this firewall, especially considering how rusty everything was, but no, it actually bites in down there too. So pretty nice. I don't know why that doesn't go through there. So I need to trim that just a little bit. I'm gonna grind it. Maybe I pulled it in when I bolted it in, but I doubt it. I don't know, let's see what happens real quick. Tighten it down, but whenever I start to mount it to the hood, I'll probably loosen it up and have some play in it, but that is awesome. Really, really heavy duty. It has shocks go on here. These seem way too long. Maybe it's all the way out. Oh, that's a heavy duty little shock. These go in here, so it holds it up. It's awesome. Also, uh, this isn't a sponsored ad. I'm just going through this kit. It's crazy expensive, but I am happy how thick they make the plates. Like all this plate is made out of like half inch, three eighths. This is a half inch piece right here. So should be plenty strong for these hoods because as we already found out, they are not that light. Now there's a couple different ways you can do. You can measure everything out. This plate has to get welded to the hood and that's how it bolts in. You can measure everything out and weld it on the hood and then put the hood on. But what it said in the instructions, seems like a better way to make sure it's center and where it needs to be is take your tires off, jack it up, put the hood on, and then crawl into there and just tack weld it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the driver's side hinge put in too, and then tomorrow when my dad is down here to help me, uh, I'll be able to just mount the hood, and then we get this plate in here and just tack weld, it to, tack weld it where it needs to be, and then I know it will be perfect. I won't have to worry about 
you know, if it's a quarter inch off, your hood just doesn't shut right. <laughs> so it's just too much play in it. So I still have to say, let's do the driver's side now. This was more work than I thought it was gonna be, but now that I did this side, it should be easier to do the other. Okay, let's button this. What the hell was that? Holy shit. I thought somebody was like banging on the door. I think it's thundering. I didn't even know it was supposed to rain tonight. That would have been I just realized I uh, cleaned out the CRX tonight. This is a project coming up on the channel. I left it open so it would dry out. <laughs> Here's the amazing part. I got this CRX today and I'm gonna be doing a rear wheel drive V8. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I don't know how much this is gonna be on the YouTube channel because I don't know that my hot rod following is gonna like it, but I'm really excited about it. I've wanted to do this since I was a kid. I mean. 20 years ago when I was like 13, I wanted to do this shit. I got it today, I got it all power washed. And the reason all the doors were open because I was like, oh, you know what, I'll let it dry out since I power washed it today. Well, yeah, there, there's no point even closing it now. We're just gonna let it rip. <laughs> Holy shit. When I'm grinding and welding and just doing loud shit, I always have my headphones in and I'm just jamming. These are noise canceling headphones, so they're basically earplugs. So I didn't hear anything. No rain, no thunder, no nothing. I was like, oh, we're good, no big deal. And then I turned the camera on, and it sounded, I thought at first somebody was knocking on the door, and I was like, it's 2 in the morning, what the hell? It was just a lot of thunder. This is the last thing i got to do. There we go. Perfect. That should work out great. Man, it was really solid. What we got to do now, we're going to call it a night because it's getting late. I want to get it jacked up. I'm not going to put the hood back on. I have my dad help me with that tomorrow. I want to get it jacked up and have the wheels off. And I want to get it up as high as I can because I got to get my fat ass under there and weld this. So I'm going to get it way up. Let's do that. Wow, it's coming down. Holy crap. Okay, cool. So what I'm going to do now is get this thing jacked way up. I'm not going to try and put the hood on by myself. I'm going to wait for Dad to help me with that tomorrow. But I want to get this thing up as high as I can since I have to get in there and actually weld. I need to take the tires off too. Get the wheels out of the way and just get it. I just want to get it up like this high. So whenever I'm under there, I got room. Let's do that and we're going to call it a night because it is getting late. And that shit is really coming down. Holy shit. Look at that. Wow. I knew I had a uh, issue over there in the wall where the foundation is, but I didn't realize it just came out instantly. <laughs> I mean, it's only been raining for like 20 minutes. Damn. We need to fix that. Two car garage problems, baby. All right, I got it jacked up. I should be able to get my big ass in there and tack weld it, but I need dad's help in the morning. Side note, did not realize this was that bad. Every time I come in after rain, I'd have a puddle. It wasn't anything like this. It'd be a little puddle, you know, I'd sweep it out, no big deal. I've never been in here during a hard rain. Look at this, holy shit, damn. It's like Noah's Ark. I'm gonna jump on the Impala and I gotta get, you know, two elephants and two mice and all that shit. Holy cow. All right, cool. I'll be back in the morning and apparently I'm gonna have to squeegee the floor before I do any welding or it will get really shocky. <laughs> all right, bye. <laughs> Okay, let me show you what's going on because it's hard to get a camera in here. So these are the plates 
that this bolts to. What I did, I was got underneath the car and tack welded them. I thought they were perfect where they were, so I wasn't even gonna worry about adjusting the hood because I seemed really good. Open and close it. Had a little bit of a gap here, but not too bad. I was like, okay, cool, let's just weld it solid. Well, when I did that, I actually welded the hinge to the part it bolts to, which means we had no adjustment at all. And at first I was like, well, no big deal. I already have it, you know, where I want it, that's fine. Then I completely forgot about this cowl piece. And I put it on there and it was already dented anyway. It wouldn't even let the hood go up and down. It's binding, it bent it up, like turn it into a pretzel. Now I went ahead and made sure I cut these loose because these obviously have to come completely off so that I have adjustability. Even though the hood was shut and perfect, it is catching that, which means it needs to come forward a little bit. So got that broke loose. The good news is I can get a hell of a better weld in there now this isn't bolted on. Uh, I can get all this top and all the bottom. So I'm gonna do this side and then I'm gonna do that side. I don't wanna take them both off because then the hood's gonna fall on me. So right now that side's still bolted on. I'm gonna get this one welded and then I can bolt it on and then do the driver's side. Giant pain in the ass by yourself, but I should be good to go. The great news is I know those hinges are where they need to be because the hood was opening and closing. I just needed to adjust a little bit. So I just settled that because I needed a break to be honest with you. <laughs> today when dad was helping me i assumed i had 15 minutes of work left maybe 20. well that was three and a half hours ago had to cut it had to re-weld it had to basically take the hood off so i could weld all around the new pads the new mounts and now i'm fighting these freaking shocks also making sure the stupid cowl piece fit it's giving me all kinds of crap and i had a bent up one to begin with that definitely doesn't help This took entirely too long, but I am so happy. Oh, it looks great too. Check it out. That is a really clean setup. I love it. Oh, I'm going to bed. I cannot believe I spent so many hours on this thing. Two nights in a row. Son of a bitch. Boy, that is a good looking truck. The next day. I'm not gonna lie to you. That makes me so much happier than you could imagine. I have been picking up this stupid heavy hood Anytime I needed to mess with the carburetor, mess with the engine, mess with the steering, and now it's finally opening and shutting like it should. Not to mention those hidden hinges are just awesome. Those were worth every single penny. Very, very excited. Other good news, I finally got my square tubing. I got 200 foot 
250 foot actually of one inch square tubing. We need to make a floor for the Blazer. We need to make a floor for the Model A and the Impala. I'll probably end up getting more, but that is a hell of a good start. So on the last video, we got started in the rear section of it. Basically it's all kind of squared away. I don't want to finish up the back part until I know exactly where my fuel pump and all that stuff is going to be in the tank. But I would like to continue from here forward. That's what we're going to do. This video is already running late to Richard because that's that's how every video is, but I would like to get at least all the square tubing in there. In the next video, we can start putting sheet metal over the top. So let's uh, stop babbling and get to work. Okay, I'm done for the night. Check it out. We got so much finished on this. I'm very happy. Basically, the rear is done. I'm going to put one more piece in there. And then this is just going to be a flat sheet that I can unbolt. It'll bolt in, bolt out. That way, if you ever need to mess with the gas tank, it'll be super easy to get to. I did not want to get that all covered up. And then, you know, you have to start working on the tank from the bottom, all that bullshit. We basically got everything done up to here. I need to connect that to the firewall but i'm gonna wait for now because i think i'm gonna get like some quarter inch plate and just run it up there that's how i started it on the impala got a ton of stuff done basically basically i have about another hour or two with the square tubing and then we'll actually start being able to put some sheet metal down which is awesome what i want to do tomorrow to button up this video is i want to push this outside and i want to see it with its hood up because it's never the hood latch hinge system has never really worked and the fact that it's working perfect is nice. So also it's always nice to get them outside. I like to see them outside of the shop sometimes, but uh, yeah, I'm done for the night. That is a cool looking truck. <laughs> Holy shit, I love it. Oh man. It's funny how something as simple as hood hinges can be such a giant pain in the ass, but also just make you so happy when it's finally done. How the hood was gonna be done was the biggest stressor I had, because I thought maybe I was going to try and flip, or I was even thinking a Buick that opens like a book, you know, Buick hood. And then I just found those, and I said, screw it, let's get them. And I'm very happy. This is probably my favorite truck right now. I'm sorry. 55 can hear me right now, so my apologies. But damn, that thing is cool as shit. Next video, I want to get my air tank mounted and get my air manifold and all that stuff done, because... I'm really getting tired of <laughs> lines sticking out everywhere and having to fill them up with my hose. I just want to hit a button. So we're going to do that in the next video. Also, I'd like to get it running. It hasn't really been running yet. And in reality, throw it in gear and see what happens because we got a drive shaft now. We got a really good start to the floor. We're going to be hitting this thing hard again. And I'm excited because I am so in love with this stupid truck. This thing used to be a long bed, $1,000 shitty C10. And look at her go now, baby. I'm stoked. Listen, I know I'm biased, but that's like the coolest truck on the planet to me. So excited. We have a million things we still have to do to it. I have a million things I had to do on several projects. Also, we have three new projects starting on the shop. 91 Honda CRX. Don't worry about it. We're, we're going to have some fun with that one. I also have another under $1,000 build starting 
with a BMW and a 66 Mustang. We also have a 1966 Ford truck that I just bought. I'm picking that up in about two hours. So stay tuned for all that. If you are not already subscribed, please hit that button now. Thank you very much for watching. For the coolest merchandise on the planet, go to caseyscustoms.com. Please like, share, comment, all that good shit they tell you to the end videos and check out some more of my other videos. Peace, I love you. I